Thank you for liberating this town. American World War II veterans. Heroes returning to a city in the Czech Republic. It's a celebration of liberty and free, and I think it's a celebration of uh, United States. Honored and remembered for their service and sacrifice. It humbles me. It humbles me. Makes tears come to your eyes, really. This is Return to Pilsen, an American story. Many World War II veterans have fond memories of liberating the Czech city of Pilsen, memories that are shared every year at the city's Liberation Festival. Fox 11's Mark Leland traveled to Pilsen for this year's festival, and he joins us this morning with another Wisconsin connection to the event. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Rachel. You know, each year, some of the remaining World War II veterans who helped to liberate the city of Pilsen return to Pilsen, and they all have a story to tell in their own way, including one veteran who grew up right here in Wisconsin. The images of World War II remain vivid in the minds of those who lived through it. The death, the destruction, and in the city of Pilsen, in what's now the Czech Republic, the celebration of being liberated. Stories have been passed down from generation to generation. Yeah, my grandfather, John Patton, I mean, he, he came in, you know, in June after the city had been liberated. But the people are thrilled because they all think Patton did it. And Patton did it with 400,000 other great Americans. I was one of the first veterans to come back. Each year since 1990, some of those great Americans who helped to bring freedom to Pilsen have returned to take part in the city's annual Liberation Festival to be honored and to share their stories with the people. The Second Infantry Division traveled from the Belgium-German border east, north, south. It was a zigzag mm -hmm. journey. So Earl Ingram was part of the 2nd Infantry Division, as was James Duncan. But as Duncan made his way to help free Pilsen, his most memorable shots were not with a gun, but a camera. Starting in the little village of Domoslice, which was the largest village, first large village that was uh, liberated in, in uh, Czechoslovakia, I took uh, just literally dozens of pictures. So I concentrated on taking pictures of people because that's always the kind of pictures that one remembers and looks at, at later. Duncan admits he was not a professional photographer, but he always loved capturing life on film, even as a child growing up in Madison, Wisconsin. I used to ride my bicycle out to the Madison Airport to uh, the Royal Airport in Madison, actually, in those days, uh, which was on the southeast side, and uh, take pictures of airplanes with my, with my box camera. And while most photographs end up in albums, Duncan decided during his fifth visit to Pilsen that these pictures needed to be seen by those in Pilsen today. So he made copies for the city which put together a public display when Duncan returned for the 2013 Liberation Festival. That it was my dream all these 68 years that somehow uh, those pictures would be available for people to recognize themselves, hopefully, or uh, their grandparents mm -hmm. or their parents. Duncan took these pictures in the spring of 1945. He says he got some of the film and cameras from German prisoners of war literally stole it out of, uh, out of um, bombed out stores, bombed out houses, and in many cases uh, by saying uh, to uh, captured German officers, hast du photo apparat? Nein, nein. But if they had photo apparat film, in other words, or cameras, mm -hmm. or whatever, they were very happy to turn it over to me. You know? The display shows just a fraction of the 332 pictures he took in 1945. But they did what he had hoped for, to bring back memories of those who recognized the sights and, more importantly, could pick out relatives. This woman identified her family. And there were others. I was particularly thrilled and perhaps one of the high points of my life that I learned uh, that a lady actually who was six years old at the time recognized not only herself but her younger brother in one of the pictures that I took. Now, Duncan knows he won't always be around, but he's pleased 
What he saw and what he captured through a lens in 1945 will live on, and the city hopes to show even more of Duncan's photographs mm. in the future. They're Rachel. great pictures. Kind of exciting. You've yeah. taken pictures back then. He's held on to them all these years. And they, they look so fantastic now. now. Not looking so great back in the day, the buildings <laughs> yeah. in Pilsen, but it seems like they've rebounded quite well. Yes. I mean, you, you would think that you know, with all the war going on, so many would be damaged, but that wasn't the case. Thankfully, Pilsen did survive most of the damage there. Some damage to some structures, but but most still in place, including the city's centerpiece in the town square. It's a massive Gothic-style cathedral that was started to be constructed in the 12th, 12th century. It finished in the 16th century, and it still stands today. Cool. And they're already getting ready for next year's festival? <laughs> they are. They are. They're always getting ready for the next <laughs> festival. Of course, it will once again fall around May 6th. That's the day the city was liberated by the American soldiers. And we're in the process of actually putting together a documentary on what we've uh, shown you this week and, and a whole lot more that we haven't shown you so far. It'll be first shown at the Meyer Theater on November 12th mm -hmm. this year, 2013, as part of an even bigger cool. uh, celebration, a bigger event put on by the Lavalette Foundation called Sharing an American Story. Tickets go on sale May 31st through Ticketstar. And of course, then Fox 11 will air the documentary after that in November. Oh, looking forward to it. All Thanks, right. Mark.